Hi all, um, I haven't shot a video for a few weeks now because I've been so busy um, running workshops and doing photography jobs so I've just not had a chance to get out very much um, other than sort of work wise and I find it very hard to shoot video when I'm sort of trying to teach a group of people about photography. So I'm back to my local reserve, I was here a few weeks ago and I did a vlog here um, but the reason I'm back is because there's been some really good reports about um, a kestrel coming in really close onto a, a perch and people have been getting great flight shots, great perch shots so I'm going to go and have a look, it's on um, what we'd call hide number three so that's the furthest one away so I've got a bit of a hike and because I'm sort of going to just be standing in the hide all afternoon I've brought my big 600mm prime lens so I've not used uh, I've not brought the 200 to 500 this time I've brought the 600 prime because that's going to give me a bit more reach and I can use a converter with that lens as well so although it's a lot heavier I'm not going to be moving around too much once I'm in the hide so I'm going to I've brought the big one this time so I'm going to carry on hiking because it's going to take me at least half an hour probably to get to the third hide and uh, when I get there I'll talk to you about um, uh, a few wildlife um, tips and uh, we'll uh, carry on I'll speak to you um, in a few minutes bye for now right hi all uh, I've uh, made it to hide number three uh, took me about 30 minutes and I've been in and had a quick look around not a lot there at the moment but that's okay because I'm going to spend the whole afternoon here uh, probably well until it gets dark so three or four hours uh, we're at the um, end of autumn really so um, it's going to get dark at about four o'clock and I'll probably stay here till about then or just before um, and that's also a good thing because we've got good quality light all day the sun's going to be low in the sky all day and I've got direct sunlight uh, onto my subjects when they turn up fingers crossed um, and one of the things I wanted to talk about today well I want to talk about a number of things actually and one of them was about learning about the places you're going to go and photograph so the more I know about a reserve the more I can plan my day so I know that for this hide the afternoon is best so I'm going to come here in the afternoon uh, and on a sunny day I've got really directional sunlight on the animals they'll look sharper it'll bring out all the detail and it's going to look great and because it's uh, end of autumn getting on for winter time as I say the sun's going to stay low in the sky all day so we've got good quality light all day as well uh, because I'm not going to move around as I mentioned earlier I've got my 600mm lens with me it's really heavy to carry about and so if I'm doing a lot of walking I tend to take the 200 to 500 which I've mentioned on a number of occasions is a great lens but this lens gives me a bit more reach and I can use a 1.4 converter on it to take me from 600 to 840 millimeters so it means if I've got a distant subject this lens gets me that little bit closer now the main thing I wanted to talk about was how do you find wildlife um, this uh, video is not going to be about the technical side of photography we're not going to talk about shutter speeds or apertures or anything like that I just wanted to talk about how you find wildlife because for wildlife photography that's probably the hardest thing actually finding something to photograph so if you're just starting out probably one of the best ways is to go to one of the so-called honeypot sites so one of the areas where you know there's going to be loads of wildlife and there's quite a few of those around the country um, if uh, you um, want to photograph in the summer seabird colonies are brilliant so there's a number dotted all around uh, the UK Bempton Cliffs in Yorkshire is fantastic and I've done a vlog uh, about Bempton Cliffs uh, which you know you may want to have a look at hopefully and the thing with an area like that is there's thousands and thousands of seabirds if you turn up at the right time of the year which is the summer months so you're guaranteed to get great shots um, puffins on Skomer Island the Farne Islands are really good uh, so there's lots and lots of great areas the Norfolk coast for seals um, in the autumn and winter months is also fantastic but the fact of the matter is uh, I don't live close to those areas so it means I've got to take a journey and not everybody does so if you've got one of these great sites close by then that's brilliant isn't it but if you haven't and it involves traveling it's a trip and you can't do that every week so it means we've got to find our local wildlife and in Essex we've got some fantastic local wildlife um, but it does take a little bit of hunting out and there's a number of ways uh, to find the wildlife so one of the ways is to find your local reserves and as I say this is one of my local reserves here and uh, learn about how that reserve works when are the best times of the year to photograph what are the best times of the day which hides 
suit morning which high suit I am because the light's obviously going to move around. So that's the first thing, to find a local reserve and really get to know it. Also, what I find is really useful are things like local face wildlife Facebook groups and things like that because if you join these groups, great pictures are going to pop up and generally most people are quite generous and they will tell you where they photograph that animal or you'll get a hint because you can look at the background and you might know uh, that reserve and you think to yourself, I know where that picture's been photographed. So it gives you an idea of what wildlife is popping up at what times of the year. So it's another way to find that elusive subject. Um, I also belong to a really nice uh, wildlife photography group. Um, it's a really great bunch of guys and again they're really generous. If they've found a good spot for photographing wildlife they'll normally pass it on and that's great and then you can go and visit yourself and you may, may not photograph that animal but you've got a good chance. So it's just ways of um, narrowing down the search and increasing your success rate. Now, I know that there's been, as I say, a uh, Kestrel here for a, uh, a few weeks and it's been really, really, really showing well. So sitting on the perches, people have been getting great shots. So that's why I'm here today. It doesn't mean to say that I'm gonna see that Kestrel. In fact, there's probably, the odds are probably stacked more in favor of me not seeing it than seeing it. But again, that's okay because I'm having a great day I'll learn a little bit more about this reserve and if the Kestrel doesn't show up then something else may well show up so hopefully I'm still going to get some great shots so I'm going to sit and hide with my trusty 600 I'm going to have my lunch I'm going to sit here all afternoon and fingers crossed that I get some great shots if I do obviously I'll put them on the end of this vlog and uh, I think that's it for now so bye for now and uh, I'll speak to you soon right hi all um, it's been a two, two and a half hours, something like that. And um, I'm not surprised to say that I haven't photographed a Kestrel. Um, there's been no Kestrels, uh, and I'm not altogether surprised about that. But that's okay, that's wildlife photography. And apart from actually finding your subject, one of the other things you need most of all for wildlife photography is lots and lots and lots of patience. When I first got here, there wasn't any wildlife at all. And, uh, you know, you think to yourself, is it going to be an okay afternoon? Is it going to be a good afternoon? Am I literally just going to be sitting here with no wildlife? But generally, if you're patient, things do happen. And although um, there haven't been any kestrels, it's been an okay afternoon. It's been a good afternoon. Apart from the fact it's just great to be out, uh, I've photographed a few things. Now, I haven't got anything massively stunning, but that's okay. Uh, but I've got some nice shots. I've got some... Um, I've got a uh, I haven't got any kestrels, obviously. Um, I've got a cormorant in flight. I've got a uh, little egret in flight. I've got a heron in flight, and I really like herons. They're really sort of like they look like little dinosaurs, don't they? Uh, I've got lapwings in flight as well, and I've got a really nice uh, green sandpiper, which is a small wader uh, walking along the shore with a per almost a perfect reflection of itself in the still water. So I'm really pleased with that as well, and the light's been lovely. So it's been shining on the animals really soft um, directional sunlight um, but also not really too soft it's been uh, slightly slightly diffused but only a little bit diffused sunlight so it's been really nice and it's really shown the birds up well um, i've also got shell ducks in flight so it's been a good afternoon and i'm going to stick around for another half an hour or so but I think the light's starting to go completely now so it may or may not be worth me hanging around but you know Something stunning might happen, mightn't it? So I like to wait until the end if I can. So to recap, um, there's lots of different ways to find wildlife. Uh, we've talked about that. Um, additional ways might be just to go out and explore your local area. So walk the woodland. Uh, explore those woodland areas and find out when the best times of day for woodland animals are. Maybe uh, look at your shoreline if you're near the coast and find out what times of year, what times of day is best for that sort of uh, habitat. So it's a case of looking at doing, you know, putting your feet on the ground, exploring yourself, checking social media, uh, going to, um, you know, sites that um, do have lots of wildlife and also exploring your local reserves. They're all ways to find wildlife. Um, and when you're sort of first practicing, even the common stuff is, is worth shooting or photographing I should say. So look, um, it's been a, a great afternoon, it's fantastic to be out in the countryside, I love being outside, so nothing's ever wasted. I've learned a little bit more about this reserve, 
Uh, I've got some nice pictures. They might not be award-winning pictures, but they're nice pictures. So all in all, it's been a great afternoon. So um, thank you very much for watching and listening. Uh, if you've enjoyed this uh, video, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you do sub subscribe, if you can press a little bell icon and that'll notify you when uh, my next uh, video's uploaded. Um, and you know, if you've got any of your own tips for finding wildlife, um, please put them down in the comments below uh, and share them with, with every, share them with everybody else. That'd be great. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and uh, I'll speak to you soon. So um, I finished uh, my afternoon's wildlife photography, and when I got out of the hide, the clouds were absolutely fantastic, and it looked like it was going to be one of those occasions when you get a really, really, really good sunset. So uh, rather than walk back through the uh, the reserve, I decided to walk along the sea wall and I was treated to such a great sunset. I don't normally mix um, wildlife photography with landscape photography, but this sky was so great and the river looked good. So um, to add to my wildlife pictures, I also got a really nice sunset. So the composition's not the best because I didn't have my landscape gear with me. I just had one small uh, wide angled, slightly wide angled lens. Uh, with me um, and I was a bit limited to what I could do but even so it was such a great great scene and um, it was an extra bonus to an otherwise fantastic afternoon so nice afternoon's wildlife photography and also a sunset at the end of the day and it was so nice just to walk along that seawall I think I saw one other person and this sunset was fantastic so um, I had a really great afternoon and um, it was a nice added bonus Thank you.